Hey everyone. So my name is Rob Goodman and I will be the professor for your class on an introduction to statistics for the psychological sciences at Northern Arizona University. And what I wanted to do today is take some time to introduce myself to you and uh, to kind of go over uh, what the structure of this course is, why this course is important, and to address many of the common questions that students have when taking a course um, set up in this way. So first, let's just hop in. I'll introduce myself. So uh, my name's Rob. Um, please call me Rob. And uh, I, was, I received my PhD in the area of social psychology in 2014. And my emphasis was on uh, mindfulness and emotion regulation. So for those who aren't familiar, mindfulness is a, a way of using attention that is receptive and open to whatever's happening in the present moment, whether it's something outside or something within your own experience, like a thought or a feeling. And uh, so I study, uh, you know, how people vary in terms of their mindfulness, as well as uh, the efficacy of various forms of training to help people become more mindful. And to do this, I use methods from social neuroscience. Uh, I look at primarily electrocortical or EEG activity and examine how meditation or mindfulness-based training influences neural markers that are related to emotion regulation and memory performance. And so this has a, a whole variety of applications such as, you know, how adaptively people respond to stressful situations or on the memory end uh, has applications for aging populations who are at heightened risk for cognitive decline. Um, but so that's my, my main area of focus. Uh, I do want you to know that, uh, you know, many of you, I understand, are probably nervous taking this course. And I bet you weren't as nervous as I was when I was in your seat. Uh, I took this course and I was terrified because I wasn't a math person. And little did I know this course taking an undergraduate stats course in psychology would completely and totally transform the trajectory of my professional career. Since then, I went on to take in the ballpark of 15 courses in statistics at the graduate level. And uh, I've taught this introductory class in statistics. This is my 21st time. And so I want to let you know that uh, I understand some of the anxieties that you might have and uh, intend to be as helpful as possible to you as you navigate this course, especially in a condensed format. So uh, one of the things I like to do in my free time is ultralight backpacking. I love to get out there for 10 days or so in the middle of nowhere um, so up here at the top of the slide, that's uh, in the Sierras, uh, specifically the High Sierra Trail, which goes from Sequoia to Whitney. And then on the picture down below, that is on the Continental Divide in the Waymanuki Wilderness, which is, you know, just about five hours north in between Durango and Silverton in Colorado. So uh, now let's move into kind of some of the specifics about this course and what's going to be expected of you. So here's some common questions. First, how is this course structured? Well, this course is an asynchronous course, which means that we don't meet face to face. It's online, it's remote. Um, now, that could be scary at first, especially if you already have some kind of anxiety about not being a math person. But I can assure you that if there's any course that is structured for an asynchronous format, stats is it. You have the benefit 
of being able to watch the lectures and hit pause and rewind and fast forward and watch them over and over again. So if there's content that is particularly challenging to you, um, you have the ability to watch any portion of the lecture you want, anytime you want. And so uh, the same goes, you know, with, with just the whole structure of the course is you can work within your own parameters. Now there's deadlines for homework and exams and different, um, you know, types of reading assignments, but you can do them on your own time. You just need to turn it in before the deadline and however you structure it is up to you. So you have full autonomy. Uh, in this course to complete the content uh, at the pace that you'd like, as long as it's before the deadline. Um, so another question, you know, you mean I'm, you know, this, I'm never actually going to interact with people. Well, not necessarily. So um, while the, the content of the course is delivered in an asynchronous format, I'm very happy to meet with you during my office hours on Zoom. And, um, you know, typically what, how this works is, you know, you're going to read the textbook chapter for the particular topic that we're looking at, and then you're going to, um, you know, maybe watch the lecture on YouTube. And if you have questions after both of those things, you should come to my office hours. Uh, it's as simple as clicking the zoom link and I'll be able to help you in a one-on-one -on -one kind of manner. So we are flexing in a way to, while, while it's asynchronous, it is also contains component of synchronous instruction if you would elect to use it. In addition, uh, I will be doing exam review sessions that are going to be synchronous, and we can record those and post them online prior to the exam so that if you're not able to attend due to your schedule, you still have access to some of those questions. And feel free, if you can't attend in person, to email me any questions that you might have before an exam and I will address them and it will be in the video for you to watch. Okay, in addition, you're not, you know, while you can lean on me if, if you need support uh, to, to wrap your head around some of the material in this class, NAU has an outstanding academic success center that offers face-to-face -face and online tutoring for you for free. And there are tutors in there that have very much experience tutoring for this specific class. So if, um, if it would be more convenient or comfortable for you, I would strongly encourage you, should you encounter difficulties or challenges that, that you're struggling to meet, to uh, use them as a resource. So what are you gonna need for this class? Well, pretty much you need three things. Uh, you're gonna need the required textbook, which is Understanding Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences by Pagano. Now this is the 10th edition. If you can find a cheaper version, like the 9th edition, that's cool. You can get that one. But just know that anything that I may reference um, in that book, in the homework or the lecture quizzes or anything, the page numbers might not match up exactly and things like that. But the content shouldn't really change that much. I mean, this this statistics uh, hasn't changed much since, since I was an undergraduate. Another thing that you're going to need is a simple calculator. Now... Um, if you are familiar with how to use a graphing calculator and all that, I'm not going to stop you. But I would suggest using the most simple one you could get. The only caveat is you need to be able to use the square root function and the exponent button. So you need to be able to square things and square root them. If your calculator can do that as well as add, subtract, multiply, and divide, you're good to go in this class. And I, I do want to just say that this is not a math class. We will do some mathematical problems, but the challenge in this class has nothing to do with complicated mathematics. It really is division, subtraction, and square rooting and squaring, and that, that's it. Um, 
So I hope that might alleviate uh, some anxiety you might have. The third thing you need in this class is regular access to a computer. Um, you're going to need, it can be any computer if you're running Mac, PC, Linux, anyone will work. Um, the key here is one, you're going to need to be able to access the internet and uh, to see the videos and turn in your assignments. But you're also going to have to upload or install SPSS. So SPSS is the statistical package for the social sciences. And it's a common program used by psychologists to do statistics work. And it will be absolutely essential for you to install a copy of SPSS on your personal computer to complete any of the lab assignments. In fact, the first lab assignment that you are to complete um, for module one is to install SPSS on your computer. Okay, moving along here. So is there a lab? Well, I kind of uh, hinted at that. Yes, there is a lab. So there's a lecture portion of the class and there's a lab portion of the class. In the lecture portion, um, we're going to work on teaching you the conceptual foundations of statistics. And you're going to exercise your understanding of those um, conceptual uh, aspects by completing pre-lecture quizzes by, and doing the assigned homework. Um, the homework is oftentimes going to involve you needing to do statistical tests by hand. In the lab portion, we're basically taking what you've learned in lecture and applying it using SPSS. So you're going to be doing similar problems as, as you were doing by hand, except you're going to do them using the SPSS software package. This is going to involve learning how to, how to organize data, how to uh, analyze data with functions in SPSS, and how to interpret output that the program gives you. And this is going to be both of these, the lecture portion and the lab portion, are intimately important for your development as a psychological sciences major. In research methods, which you're going to be required to take after this, and it is currently required if you want to take any depth courses in the major, with few exceptions. And Research methods is, from day one, going to, under, going to assume that you understand the content in this. You will be using SPSS, most likely, depending on which research methods you take. You will be using SPSS on a nearly daily basis. Um, and then, subsequently, to research methods, in, in any depth course that I teach, like group behavior, or mindfulness and meditation. I know in the evolutionary psychology class, in the self and identity class, a whole variety of depth courses are all going to assume that you understand what a t-test is, what an ANOVA is, what the output means. So that, and, and in those classes, they will be assigning you um, peer-reviewed journal articles that contain result sections that have statistical write-ups in them. And the only way you're going to understand how what those sections of the readings mean is from what you learn in this class. So it's absolutely imperative. This is a very important class for you as a major in psych science. Are there exams? Yes, there are exams. There's three, right? So each exam in the class has two components. The first is a conceptual component, and this is going to be a multiple choice exam. Uh, and then the second part is a computational portion, where you're actually going to do problems and provide uh, out, you know, the, the solution to the problem. Um, now, the key here is that the exams are going to cover all domains of content. So an exam. Uh, is going to look at your understanding of material from the textbook, 
of your material, of your understanding of the material from lecture and from lab. Now, oftentimes we won't cover every detail of things in lecture. It is absolutely essential in this class that you read the textbook before you watch the lecture video. In addition, um, some problems on, on the exams uh, you're going to do by hand, and sometimes you're going to use SPSS, or you're going to interpret um, output from SPSS. And so you're, we're, these exams are assessing every domain of skill that you're, that you're picking up in this class. So the first exam is going to cover material from modules 1 through 8, right? And this includes um, some of the more simple material, but absolutely necessary material. So that's why there's more modules in the, in the first part. So you'll be uh, learning about descriptive statistics. You'll be learning about correlation, simple linear regression, random sampling, and probability. Um, and all that's going to be covered on exam one. Exam two is going to cover modules 10 through 14, which um, discusses null hypothesis significance testing and a variety of different inferential tests that involve independent variables with uh, two levels. So these include uh, a normal deviate, normal deviate test or a z-test and uh, a correlated groups t-test, uh, independent groups t-test, a one sample t-test. So that's all going to be covered on exam two. Exam three, which is the final exam, is going to cover material from modules 15 and 16. So those are analysis of variance, one-way analysis of variance, and factorial analysis of variance. And um, so a common question about exams is, are they cumulative? Well, yes and no. So for example, exam three, in order to understand the material in exam three, you must know and understand most of the material in exam two and exam one. So it builds on it on itself. And uh, so in that sense, it is cumulative. However, I'm not going to ask you questions about um, regression on exam three, which is looking at ANOVA. So each exam is only going to cover the new content in the modules presented um, for that exam, but it would be very hard to be successful and pass an exam, like to pass exam three, if you didn't understand how to do the content from exam two. So by nature, uh, the material is cumulative, but the exams are focused on the topics in, in the modules allocated to them. Okay, so what are we going to do in this class? Like, how does it work? Well, um, the first thing is you're going to need to read the textbook. So we are going to go through every chapter in this textbook with one exception. We're going to skip the chapter, uh, chapter 10, or, or I'm sorry, chapter 9 on binomial distributions. Other than that, we're going to go through the whole book. So you're going to absolutely need to read the textbook. And then after you read the textbook, you're going to complete a pre-lecture quiz on Blackboard. So this is going to assess your knowledge of the material in the textbook before the lecture is available to you. Um, pre-lecture quizzes are going to be due at noon on uh, the day that the lecture is released. And we'll go over those details in a little bit. After you complete the reading and the pre-lecture quiz, there's going to be YouTube videos posted with lecture content. So you'll watch the lecture content, and then after that, you're going to move in and do the homework. So we'll say that um, you know you, the lecture content appears. Your homework is going to be due on the next class day, right? So I post content on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, there is going to be new lecture material uh, unless there's an exam review or an exam on that date. And so if 
your if the lecture is posted on Wednesday, in all likelihood the homework is due on Friday. Homework is due at 11:59 p.m. on that on that day. So lecture comes out Wednesday, homework is due 11:59 p.m. on Friday. After you do the homework, you're going to also want to complete the lab assignment for that module. So the lab assignment, again, is going to utilize SPSS and train you how to use SPSS and interpret output from SPSS. So the homework and the lab assignments are both due at the same time on the same day. Okay, so how do you do this? Well, here is the step-by-step -step approach, right? For each module, and I would encourage you to only work on one module at a time. You're going to read the assigned chapter. Then you're going to complete the pre-lecture quiz. That pre-lecture quiz is due by noon on the day that the lecture for that module is posted. The lecture will be posted at noon. After you watch the lecture, you can do the homework and the lab assignment for that module, and they are due on the following lecture day by 11.59 p.m. So here's an example of how module one would, would uh, unfold. So on Friday, today, you're going to read the assigned chapters, and you're going to complete the pre-lecture quiz. On Monday, you have to turn in the pre-lecture quiz by noon. And at noon, the lecture appears. You can watch the lecture whenever you want. The homework for that lecture and the lab assignment are due the following Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. So I hope that isn't too confusing. Whoop. Okay, so here is a detailed course schedule that contains due dates for all of the assignments. Right now, you can find this table in the syllabus, and I've also done a screenshot of it and pasted it as an image under the syllabus tab in BB Learn, so it's much easier. You don't have to flip through the document to get to it. Everyone knows this is the juice of the syllabus anyway. So, um, <laughs> so here we can see we've got uh, module one, uh, one and two are going to be due on 10-5, which is Monday. So you've got two modules to do by Monday. This means you're going to need to read chapter one on statistics and the scientific method and chapter two on basic mathematical concepts. On Monday at noon, the pre-lecture quiz is due. And the second lecture, since this is the first lecture, the second lecture will be posted at noon. And it will cover statistics in the scientific method and basic mathematical measurement concepts. Then, uh, so then there's no homework due and there's no lab due, but the module for, for uh, or the homework for module one and two is due at 11.59 p.m. on uh, the following Wednesday, right, 10.7, and the lab is due on that Wednesday. So just wanted to walk through this so it was clear how to interpret this table. Um, I would strongly recommend that you get these assignments in a calendar. There, this is a condensed course. There's a lot of stuff, and it will be very challenging if you get behind to catch up. But if that does happen, please reach out to me, and I'm happy to work with you to get you back on track. Okay, so how will you be graded? Well. Um, there are three examinations. That's worth the lion's share of your grade, is your performance on those exams. That's really where the rubber meets the road. But in order to get there, it is going to be essential that you perform effectively on the pre-lecture quizzes, 
the homework, and the lab assignments, right? And those make up, you know, roughly a third of your grade. So I hope uh, this wasn't too scary for you. Um, if it was, I apologize. Um, it is a scary time, and this can be a very scary class on the surface. I assure you it's not what you have in your nightmares. This is a, uh, a class that for many of you will be tremendously impactful and make you qu maybe question if you might want to go into research. I know very few people who come into psychology thinking, I'm going into psych because I want to do research and take stats. But nonetheless, a good proportion of people come out of this class completely transformed in that direction. And so I encourage you to keep an open mind with this class. Try to enjoy it. Try to understand it. Your knowledge of this class, if you plan on going to grad school, this is where it is. This and research methods. So even if you're scared, it could just be that the first step is the hardest part, right? So let's talk. Uh, you know, we've been talking on this big scale about what we're going to do over the course of the next uh, several weeks. Let's just talk about what do you do now? What is the first step, right? So before noon on Monday, complete the readings and the pre-lecture quizzes for modules one and two. And then on uh, Monday, you're going to watch the lecture. And then on Wednesday by 11.59 p.m., watch the video, um, complete the homework assignment and the lab assignment for modules one and two. And then, of course, you know, on, on uh, Wednesday, there's going to be another lecture that comes up. So um, you want to stay ahead of the game on that. I really appreciate... Um, you know, uh, you taking the time to watch this video. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, please communicate with me using the email provided on the syllabus for the course. Um, I want you to know that even though this isn't a face-to-face -face class, you're not alone here, right? I'm always happy to help you uh, and provide support during Zoom office hours or by appointment. So don't hesitate to reach out, contact me if I can be of assistance to you in any way. And thank you.